<laughs> Alright boys, what's happening? Oh, I know what. Quite old day. <laughs> Tam just jump scared us. Dave's an impression is a dinosaur, so we know where to, where to put this intro. <laughs> that was uh, that was more exciting than last night's football, so that we can start there. Tam, what's been happening? You're good? I know what. Thankfully, didn't I have to head through Greenock last night? Well, I didn't have to, but I, I just didn't bother because I'm a part-timer. And to be honest, we win more now that I don't go as much. I'm not at Ando's levels yet, but I'm I'm near it. So. And why they got knocked out on a Sunday, so we really had nothing else to... I, know. I was recovering to Celtic Park, to be fair. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. You'd made your big trip to Glasgow, hadn't you, for your real team? Of course, mate. Exactly that. Kev, what's been happening? Well, I did, uh, I did go through to uh, Greenock yesterday. Um, even took two days off my work just to uh, to enjoy the experience of... It's mad that Kev's gone back, got to Greenock and gone back in time with his Wi-Fi at the same time. Kev. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Keep going, Kev. You'll get there. We'll hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, oh. <clears throat> well, you yes, never said that, enough, right. but it's good to see you. It's good to see you back. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Cheers. I was going to say that Greenock was the city of culture, so I can see that you've you, you're the the culture is as good as your Wi-Fi in Greenock. In fact, I'm actually surprised that uh, Greenock's even got Wi-Fi. To be honest, but there you go. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Well. Obviously, we'll talk last night. Hearts made the semi final of the Scottish Cup. Uh, we'll talk about last night's game versus Morton. We've got back to league action this weekend. We're away to Ross County. Actually, Ross County not playing right now. Did they not play Hibs? Uh, no, I think it's tonight. It's tomorrow night, is it not? Oh, yeah, I don't tomorrow. Know. What, tomorrow day? what day is it today? Tuesday. Tuesday, mate. Oh. I think Aberdeen are playing right now. Is that right? No, that's also tomorrow. No, there's the, cool. the Premier League. Game. Well, well, this has been a brilliant intro into <laughs> this podcast, isn't it? If nothing else, we are absolutely professional at every moment in time. Let's be Bye. honest. We'll talk about last night's football. Uh, Hearts getting to the semi final. I believe us getting to the semi final League Cup and Scottish Cup for what, the fifth time in our history, I think we've managed to get to the semi-final of both, which is either a good thing or a really sad indictment of our horrible performance in cup competitions, but we can we can discuss that later. We'll talk about all the stuff that comes with getting into the semi-finals, our opponents, uh, ticket splits, and then a wee light-hearted uh, laugh at our neighbours across the road who are now turned a blind eye to people chucking knives and corkscrews and vapes and coins but are now upset by words and want Scottish football to get behind them because they were upset at some songs that were sung at their stadium. So we'll talk about the hypocrisy of that and a whole load of nonsense in between. Sound good, boys? Ready? Sounds perfect, mate. Magic. Well, first and foremost, obviously, we've got we are now, this is a so the 153, I think, because uh, we're or something like that, because we're just skipping episode 150 because we, <laughs> for our milestone episodes, we always try to bring you something a little bit different, a bit something decent. Episode 50, we spoke to Joe Savage. 152. Uh, sorry. sorry, just jump in there, thanks, man. <laughs> for our 50th, we interviewed Joe Savage. For the hundred, we spoke to Robbo. Uh, for the 150, we're going to do a bit of. This is my story podcast in the community. Obviously, Big Hearts is Hearts' official charity, and they do some unbelievable stuff. Um, so we're going to go down on a Wednesday. They do a, a sort of community drop-in centre where you can get a free meal, a free hot meal, sit in a, a, a safe space to, to eat your dinner or whatever. And uh, We're going to go down, volunteer for the day, uh, Talk to some of the guys that volunteer and the helpers there. Talk to them about what Big Hearts means to them and the impact that it has in the community. Hopefully talk to some of the folk that use it. Uh, get their perspective and how important Big Hearts is and you know how it helps them out, etc, etc. And then hopefully hopefully we get a couple of players to come down as well and help volunteer uh, and just celebrate 
you know, just what a massive, you know, I think we went from, as Gary Hildy always says, if you've been to any of the, the plot ceremonies, you know, we went from being sort of laughed at as charity fiefs and poppy fiefs, etc., etc., to like, we were Europe's number one charity or whatever it is, football charity. We, we won that honour a few few years back. So we do um, amazing stuff. And Craig and all the guys at Big Hearts do some amazing work. So we'll bring you that episode soon. And on the back of that, we'll launch a GoFundMe for... We're going to try and raise money so that we can donate, hopefully donate at least a month's worth of meals to Big Hearts. Ideal if we could do a full year. But... Uh, because obviously it's, it's, it's expensive uh, to, to give people free food and to have the space, etc, etc. So, yeah, we'll bring you details of how you can help and support us and get involved in it, but we think it'd be a great thing to do and it'll be definitely something worthy of being 150th episode as well. So we'll get details as to when we're, when we're getting that up pretty soon. Right, boysies, headlines. Hearts make the... Semi final of the Scottish Cup. What's your thoughts, Tam? Back to Hamden we go. Absolutely. Uh, I was not happy with the draw, but you're going to have to beat Rangers at some point, I, I assume, um, or Celtic. But uh, we've 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 all been I uh, um, watched us get beat at Hamden by by Rangers, and I'm a bit worried about it again, so I'm guessing we're all supporting Rangers on Thursday night, so they've got a European game the Thursday before the semi, although that, that worked out well on that Scottish Cup final that, um, yep, I was couple of years say ago, that. so <laughs> we, won't, we, won't, we won't discuss that <laughs> Okay Kev, okay, what was your thoughts on it all? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it, look, let's be honest, right, it's great that we're there um, I think we spoke about it off um off recording anyway about how this is a, the first time uh, we've done it. I think even in probably the last twenty years, I don't think we've ever been in the League Cup as well as the Scottish Cup semi final. But it's just that element. That it's against Rangers, who at this moment in time are the better team, probably the best team in, in the country. Um, must have been two hot balls in the uh, in the old bag yesterday and two cold balls. Because let's be truthfully honest, that uh, the fact that them two were kept well apart is um, not exactly surprising, given the fact of 150 years of the the Scottish Cup, and that's the one that they want is uh, is that particular final. So let's hopefully piss all over their parade. I don't want to well, shout the first on time you, a couple Kev, of cold balls um, have been in an old bag, in it certainly has, mate. What are you saying, Tom? I don't. I, I, I can't follow that to be honest with you. So. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's happened four times uh, in the last twenty years, and then only one time before that, which is a bit mad. Which shows times? our shows our record in the uh, cup competitions in the last wee while. So, yeah. Didn't even realise it was that many times in the last twenty years. To be honest with you, because we usually do pretty shit in the league cup. So there you go. I'd quite like us to be the the Sunday, just purely because. It could, uh, if for example Celtic make to the final, then we know fine well that we're pretty much guaranteed group stage football. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Touchwood, you know, we, we should be there or thereabouts in the league, and obviously the cup winners get the good, the good Europe, Europe spot, and obviously Celtic and Rangers are going to be vying out for Champions League. Uh, so. Yeah, but you like I agree with what you said. You you got to beat them if you want to win the cup. Uh, you got you got to beat Celtic and Rangers nine times out of ten if you if you do want to win the trophy. Uh, and it's heavily stacked against us. You know what I mean? It's our hundred and fiftieth anniversary this year. We've never beaten Rangers at Hamden in our existence. We've never even taken the lead versus Rangers Rangers at Hamden. So one time, one day, someone. That's going to have to change, isn't it? But then they probably said that a hundred years ago on a podcast, didn't they? (laughs) (laughs) We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see how it goes. But uh, it is what it is. uh, The good thing, Tam, if you're looking at it right, if you want to become consistently the third best team in the country, you've got to get here, right? You've got to get to the semi-finals to give your chance the opportunity to get to a final. You've got to be in a final to win a cup, etc. If you look over the past five, six years, we've actually we've, we've got a pretty decent record in cup competitions in terms of getting to League Cup semi-finals, 
Scottish Cup semi-finals, Scottish Cup finals, etc, etc. You can't win it if you're no there. So these are how you build and become consistently the third best team in the country, isn't it? Agreed. I think if you look at probably what Naismith was set out to do at the start of the season, it's probably get third place and cup runs, get to Hamden. So to do that twice and... I'll not say it yet, but pretty much have third there. Um, that that should have been the overall uh, goals there. So at the end of the day, it's a free hit in a sense that I don't know how expected the fans are. I just hope we don't turn up like we did at Ibrox a few weeks ago. Well, what I'll say about the third, but it'll be the third force in Scottish football is we have to go and sell that out. There will be pressure by Rangers and the SFA to give us less than 50% because obviously we I think we sold 18,000 tickets for the League Cup semi-final. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's the SFA are looking to do very similar, but to give ourselves any opportunity of getting to the final, we need 22, 25,000 Hearts fans there, Kev, don't we? Exactly. Um, and, and, you know, it is, I think... In people's minds, the Scottish Cup is always regarded as a bigger trophy, uh, much more um, stature within um, Scottish football around the Scottish Cup than it is going around the League Cup. Um, and really, we, we've got to get behind the team. You know, there's I mean, there was three and a half thousand travelling fans last night. Um, if you can travel to Greenock um, on a Monday night, <laughs> then really you should also be able to, you know, go to yeah, hammed in on a, on a Sunday or a Saturday whenever it may be um, and support the team and, and get behind them and you know if you don't do that you don't have the same voice behind the team because you're only selling 18,000 tickets then in my opinion shame on you to be honest with you it's my, my own personal opinion well especially when like I said if we go into Europe next year we know fine well there'll be clamour to get home European tickets, you know, we all know what it was like to try and get away briefs for last year in Europe, etc, etc. These are the games where we need fans to show up. Uh, and I need I need, I need, need more than 18,000 fans to show up so I can do a TIFO. So please make sure that you buy tickets <laughs> if you want. And if you want a semi-final display, we need, we need to sell more than 18,000 tickets. So uh, let's make it happen. Bye. Your thoughts on the the other semi, obviously, Celtic kind of stumbled through against Livingston. Aberdeen put in their, their best probable performance of the season so far, and then their interim manager decided that he'd, he'd had enough and walked away. You get any thoughts on that other tie? I think, I think, in all honesty, I think Celtic are currently in a they're in a blip. Um. Aberdeen probably think they might be able to actually give them a game, but I think the, the I think in all honesty, Celtic will probably just be having off in the in the, the old bank to uh, to get past Aberdeen. In all honesty, um, I think the fact of the pitch being so much bigger than what Petodre is, also what Tynecastle is, and I think that's one of our biggest problems. Um, will just actually play into Celtic's hands, and I think they would probably be favourites to to go through. Aberdeen are a total mess, aren't they? That's better. <laughs> it's a shame. It's a shame. Uh, it's a real shame, Kev. They're a real, real top-notch club, and I'm so sad that they're having such a horrible time. But okay. what a total mess! And that annoys me even more that Robbie Nielsen <laughs> made such a Ricky Hunt at last season because <laughs> in the past two and a half, three seasons, they've had umpteen meltdowns, and this is just. The next one. They made it sound, Neil Warnock made it sound like he was stepping aside because the new man was imminent. Like he was he was on his way. He was just about to be announced, etc, etc. And then the very next day, Aberdeen basically said that they've not even started interviewing yet. And they've got a short list of managers. I was like, this is superb. What an implosion. Couldn't they have happened to a nicer bunch? Get it right fucking up, yeah. You, ha- you have always said you liked Warnock and to be honest on the basis of the last six weeks it's, you're right <laughs> he's done a great job <laughs> he's, a good guy. he's a good guy he's done exactly what I wanted him to do to that horrible horrible football club uh, right let's say I, I, I'm in your camp Kev I think that it doesn't matter how bad Celtic and Rangers are when it comes to Hamden it comes to 
this point of the season, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's very, very rare that they they mess up. Uh, and like I said, I think Celtic, where well, they battered Dundee by seven, they've scored four for you Levy there, although two of them were offside. Uh, if we're chopping off Lauren Shanklin's goal versus them because his fucking armpit pubes were offside, then how the third and the fourth count at Celtic Park, I've got absolutely no idea, but that's VAR for you, isn't it? And we've given VAR enough uh, air time, so let's just park it there. Hey, let's move on. Let's move on. Right, uh, obviously we spoke about there. Ten Castle, the recent derby. We had pies and juice and pitch invasions and corkscrews being chucked and vapes and coins and airpods. And strangely, the only club that's released a statement about fan behaviour is Hibs. Hearts are radio silence and Hibs have decided that they've had enough and want to ban every set of away fans from Easter Road except for Hearts fans. Anybody want to pick up that hypocrisy grenade and discuss it? <laughs> Bash on Tom. What you stop? <laughs> So I just stun silence, is it? Is that what it don't was? Don't really know what to say, to be honest. It's it's one of those things. I I get why hearts have uh, obviously reduced the allocations of old farm everywhere else because we've we've managed to sell our tickets. But on the basis of Sunday's attendance at Easter Road, I don't, I don't know what what the point in that is. But that's another read I get them at while we're at it as well. But yeah, aye aye. <clears throat> I don't really get it. If I'm being honest, we are. I get that, I don't know, I think we've spoke about how weird a football club they are. They seem to be on some weird upsurge of confidence, even though they've won two games since December. And I think they think that that this is, if they keep the public opinion and the swell of public opinion from their fans positive, that it will somehow mask the fact that they're not in the semi-final of the Scottish Cup. They are six and they're 21 points behind Hearts. Like, maybe that's me because I'm a bit of jambo, but I don't know. It just seems... I couldn't believe it, Kevin. I was reading it. I was like, this... Uh, it, it, all the timing of anything, you'd be saying, keep your head down and just be quiet. Because I'm pretty sure there's a vape as well chucked on Sunday as well. I'm pretty sure I've seen the ref handing stuff over to the match delegate coming from the home end it just seems bananas to me kev it's 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 very strange but i mean as you rightly say there's you know we're not really or do we get to a point where you're not actually surprised at what comes out of easter road um i get the i get the stance i get the under you know why they want to take such a such an actual action however why now you know it's it seems very strange to do it now when as you rightly say, in the public eye, their fans aren't coming across in a great way, given what happened a couple of weeks ago at Tynecastle, and as you on on Sunday um, against Rangers, where their own fans throwing objects in their own ground, bizarre. But as I say, but Kev, they shouted bad words at Martin Boyle. Oh, did they? No. Oh, I never knew about this. They sang at Martin Boyle. I know. What a shame. It's mad oh, is it? that we've we seen. Well, it was mad that everything that we've seen that was bad at the game on Sunday, Martin Boyle's hair is still the worst thing that I've seen. <laughs> that is an absolute, it's an absolute shanner. Uh, but I look at, uh, let me be perfectly clear at the start, if Hibs had just came out and said that they were cutting the allocation because they were to prioritise getting home fans into the stadium, they'd get two thumbs up from me. Uh, I think that's exactly the way most football clubs should be. They need to get rid of this vision where they have to pander to Celtic and Rangers because they get two away crowds a season, etc., etc., because it keeps some of their books balanced. If Hibs had came out and said, we're cutting the allocation because we want to get more home fans into the stadium, then I'd have been like, absolutely fine. But the fact that, on especially the past couple of weeks that they've had, they've said it's because of bad behaviour or fan behaviour, etc., etc., is just a bit, like I said, it's a bit hypocritical for me, but that is just Hibs in a nutshell, and it. So, like I said, they beat us one-one, 
uh, and then lost. And we beat Celtic and made it to the Scottish Cup semi-final, but yet they're still convinced that we are shite and that they are unbelievable. So it is, there is something in the water down there, like, but let's leave it at that. I'd, I'd not prefer it any other way, to be honest. It's, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Anything else happening in the world of hearts that we want to talk about? Obviously, we think club announced that they're they're going ahead with the Maroon Mile, something that we heard about first when we did the FOH candidate interviews a wee while back. Thoughts on it? Sounds like a good idea in principle, doesn't it? We've been big fans of that for a while. I think it's a great idea. Um, as you guys know, I've I've attended the the ceremony at the at the clock at Haymarket for. Last Christ, I'm going to go and beat a Jake out of you, Kev. No, no, uh, for Jake God knows, man. God knows how many years, <laughs> and to actually walk that journey, um, back from Haymarket all the way to, to Tynecastle, is uh, to have something like that, I think, is a fantastic idea. Um, you know, yeah, I agree, Kev. It's definitely, um, be interesting of who they actually select and who they pick out, um, and how they then add to it. I think that's something I've not read yet of how they would add to it in the years to come. Um, because you will want to add other players in there. You could look at Sir Lawrence Shankland. Um, you know, if he signs a new contract, he could be where does you know where do you put him? All these kind of things need to be sort of looked at as well as. I'm just waiting yeah, for was... Don Cowie, Craig Levine, Stephen McLean, <laughs> Stephen <laughs> Presley, <laughs> everyone to all pass the, all the like... <laughs> we, we could we could start that. Like... Could start the Corbett <laughs> Mile. <laughs> But being like I'm being being serious though, like if you go anywhere, even if you go like down to London or any major city or whatever, as soon as as soon as you get within the vicinity of one of the big stadiums, you everything you start to see starts turning towards that club. Edinburgh for too long has been too shy or whatever you want to call it of promoting its football clubs. You come off a flight and it's it's all stupid heather and grouse and tartan and shortbread and all that pish to promote you to go to rugby. But you don't see a single thing about football. You don't see anything about Edinburgh's football teams. Uh, given the, the story of our own football club and its origins and our neighbours as well, there's plenty to celebrate. And the fact that we don't is mental. The fact that you could quite easily drive past Tynecastle in and around Gorgie, and unless you were one of us and knew where it was, you wouldn't know it was even there. And to think that an institution in Edinburgh that stood for 150 years and what is represented to Edinburgh and what is brought to Edinburgh, for the fact that it's not even celebrated, it's there's no milestones, there's nothing there, there's no tram stops, there's no points on the open-top bus tours or anything like that that go near any of the football stadiums in Edinburgh is just mental and I think it's something that if this is the first foray into making the club more part of Edinburgh I know that sounds daft because we're obviously part of Edinburgh but open it to the wider markets etc etc then then I'm all for it and like you said Kev the amount of stories that could be told from players that you know young and old you know, that have got all different types of stories, whether it be McRae's Battalion and everybody that signed up and lost their lives to heroes, to guys that are that you never never maybe never really knew about. To even our own guys that are like everybody talks about like Willie Bald or Dave McKay and stuff, but young folk coming through probably never heard the stories of these guys. Like these guys were proper hearts. Do you know what I mean? Like Dave McKay, for example, was at the top of his game. He was an elite football player and loved Hearts, spoke about Hearts at every opportunity, even when he was in England, even when he was playing with Scotland, they'd tell anybody that would listen his love for Hart and Lovie, and Willie Bald grew up in pretty much Dalry, he? he was like streets away from Tyne Castle, and became club hero, Gary Locke again, club captain, left a trophy, he's been a manager, he's been a caretaker, he's been Hearty Harry, stadium announcer, like, in Again, we've we've spoke about it at length on here that we need to break the cycle of celebrating somebody because they're no longer here. Let's celebrate them when they are here. Yep. 
Gary McKay's doing a talk or did a talk with Robbo. Gary McKay's our leading appearance maker at Hearts. He did everything that we wanted to do. Lived the dream. And he's never around Ten Castle. You never hear about him. You never see the club doing interviews with him. You never see anything plastered about a guy that is one of us that lived our dreams. Jim Jeffries, like all that stuff. So hopefully this is the start of the club getting a bit more ingratiated with, with Edinburgh and really celebrating its its history in that as well. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And, anything else? World of Hearts that's caught anybody's eyes? No. No, no real updates on any injury fronts, realistically. I know, it's been a bit quiet in the injury yeah. front, hasn't it? Oh, I know they said been... Neuenhoff will be back after international break, which... You could tell he was missed yesterday, but we'll get on to that. But in terms of centre halves, like Halkett and Kent, nothing really has there. I know that's it. Halkett and Kent are out. Mackay and Boyce are out. Noon halfs out. Oda seems to have disappeared. So injuries are stacking up. When is the international break? Next week. After Ross County. Well, there you go. Well, your your national side, uh, Tam has picked more goalkeepers than it has strikers. Is that? If there's anything to sum up, Steve, Steve Clark. Is it? <laughs> That's pretty much it, isn't it? But aye. Uh, is that a typo? Because I've seen that they invited the Motherwell goalkeeper. Is that just a joke? Is it like something to do with comic relief or something? Yeah, aye. Aye. He made one good save against uh, Ibrox, and I think he's just lived off that like two weeks ago. Aye. Um, aye. If Lauren Shankland does not start in these two games. I'll hand in my passport and be gone. There you go. No. <laughs> well, I couldn't care less about him starting. I'm just mad about who does he room with. Do you know what I mean? If he's in, if he's rooming with John Suter and John Suter's agent, then we're uh, we're uh, fucked, as they would like to say. Just put me because that'll be all. That's all I hear about in it. Put him a big shagger. The Rangers. There. He can lock the door. Bolt put a big shagger. Gordon. Correct. Okay, true. Bore the bore them eight years. I don't know what I say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Well, that was that was enough Scotland chat. I don't actually know who you were playing. Mo- don't ever say we again. Don't include me in that we. <laughs> it's the royal we. <laughs> <laughs> Martin. Monday night, Capelo. Before we even start about. The game. What I will say, Kev, is that Airdrie's pitch was a thousand times better than Morton's pitch. Yes. I don't know yeah, uh, if it came through. And... Oh. <laughs> oh, Kev, your Wi Fi still on Morton? <laughs> still in 1962, like uh, the rest of the green, okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The pa- uh, it was a shocker, a pitch, wasn't it? Uh, it will. <laughs> Better than I. It's going to be a hell of a lot worse than it was. <laughs> Tam, well, me and you will talk about the pitch. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Where you watched it Why don't you TV? tell me? Because it you... didn't actually look that bad on the TV. I, I will say that. It didn't look that bad. Both teams had to play in it, right? So it's not an excuse, right? Hearts were below par at points yesterday. But the ball bounced and bobbled and slid and took picked up spin it was crazy watching it it was like it looks like it could be alright until you actually see the players try to take touches or make passes or whatever and it took us a took us a long time to get the bounce of the ball. Someone in the community chat Big Ginger said that Capola was a public park covered in dog shit and honestly it wasn't that far off. <laughs> it wasn't that far off because it was a it was a shock of the app pitch like but Start for the start. Tam, is there any surprises in the starting eleven for you? Uh, I don't think so, to be honest. I've, I thought, obviously, we knew Neuenhoff wasn't going to be there. It's good to see Vargas back in. He seems to enjoy this this competition. Um, since I think, well, after last night, he's scored in every round now, hasn't he? So that was good. But other than that, no shocks. I was I wasn't surprised we went back to the back four again, put it that way. Um, um and that way. I think Vargas Rudy was the last person to do it, wasn't it? I think Rudy scored in 
Uh, I think Rudy scored in the semi final as well, potentially. I think, but Rudy was the last player that scored in every round of the Scottish Cup that we played in for Vargas. What about you, Kev? Any surprises from the starting 11? Um, no, I don't think there was any uh, any surprises coming from from that starting eleven. I think it sort of picked itself given given injuries. Um, as Tam says, uh, new enough being out meant that Grant would would fit in there. I think the only surprise from my point of view was that uh, Cochrane didn't start. That was probably the only the only surprise for me. Good point. I forgot about that. Yeah, that was that was going to be my only point. Was that Cochrane wasn't there? He was the only one that kind of shocked me as, as not being in a team. Uh, I didn't think we would have played Sibic. I thought we would have played uh, Rowles and Kingsley with Cochrane and, and Dexter. So that was about my only my only shock. <coughs> Thoughts in the, the first half? Anything stick out to you? Or? He's football a bad name. That, that half of football, I'm not going to lie to you. It was the, was the most enjoyable from both sides. But I think Hearts played it well in the first 10, 15 minutes. Let them sort of come at us, punt, like punt the ball out of the park, see what they were about, and then try and take the game after that. I thought it was good. Tried to get the ball down after that. Then we obviously had the majority of possession, but there was just there were, I felt there was a, we did really miss Noonhoff or someone like that sort of thing. Grant was a bit anonymous. There was no real link between the the midfield and the the forwards. I thought we were missing that sort of creative spark. I don't know if that's something Noonhoff's brought by driving forward, but we did miss that yesterday certainly. I, I don't disagree that we missed Noonhoff, uh, but I don't. Disagree. I, I disagree that we lacked a creative spark. If I mean, because I, Kev, at the game, maybe you different to me and how you seen it or whatever. But I, ne- I never at any point felt like Martin were going to beat Hearts at any point. Um, I thought Hearts were below their best, but never panicked, and just I think we struggled to get used to the pitch. You know, a couple of times, like Grant tried to play a wee dink passes down the channel and it bobbled up and hit off him and went wide and stuff. It was maybe just a bit of that lack of finesse or whatever or whatever in the first half. But again, I, just, I thought Hearts created more than enough op- openings and opportunities in the first half to at least score one in the first half. Yeah, I think I think if you look at it... Um... At no point did did Gordon have to make any sort of you know significant save. I think there was one. It was like straight at him though. Took it straight in the chest. Dealt with it fairly well. I thought we put a lot of pressure on them. My only my only sort of grudge, and this not just from the first half. This is this is the whole the whole game. Um, I don't think we took the decision to move forward quickly enough. I think it was a lot. It was an awful yeah. lot of passing back and forth, back and forth. Pulling them left, pull them right, pull them left, pull them right. It was just requiring that sort of somebody to take the bull by the horns to an extent and and move forward uh, or push that ball forward quicker than we did. And I think that gave them a little bit more, I'm not going to say confidence, I just think it meant that they thought, actually, we've got this in control, we can we can deal with this. Uh, whereas we never really asked them a question, especially in the first half. Second half was slightly different because I know that they had a wee bit of spell at the beginning. Uh, of the second half, but I still think from probably 60, 65 minutes on, there was only one team in it. I would say, like, see with the, the passing and the, the sort of keeping the possession, I think we were, that was part of the plan, though, in terms of, I don't know if it was tired and name out, I know they were like, named about four folk on the bench or something like that, and, and there were some injured on the bench, but I, I think there was certainly some aspect of that, what we were playing the full 90 minutes, and I thought that worked to an extent, but I do agree it should have been quicker. I think we look. There's loads of things you have to take into consideration. It's a quarter final, Monday night, Ming and pitch, lower league opposition. <clears throat> it was always going to be stuffy. Do you know what I mean? Like it was always, it always going to be. And I seen some people saying that Martin <clears throat> seemed more up for it than us, which makes sense, right? Big big side coming to Morton, you get an opportunity to get to a semi-final, take another scalp, etc. So I kind of expected them to be a bit more 
like up for it, a bit more aggressive, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But they never had any quality. They lacked quality all over the pitch, and where they did get their half chances or opportunities was from what we'd spoke about there. It'd be second balls or the ball bouncing, breaking the ball bound, the the break of the ball falling to them, bad touches, heavy touches in the middle of the park, and their half chances were what Kev said there. You know, they were you're in there. Uh, I listened to do the enemy <coughs> after the game, and I can understand why he's he's sticking up for his team and saying, "Oh, we were lucky to get through or whatever." It's exactly what you'd expect somebody to say that shot themselves at high school, but it was uh, the hearts were completely and utterly comfortable for me. And the the most impl- if there was say one thing that pleased me last night, Kev, I mean maybe it doesn't come across in the TV because I know what I'm like when I watch Hearts on the TV versus when I'm there in person. Thing I liked the most last night, Kev, is Hearts never panicked. On the park, we never panicked. And the thing that I liked the most as well, Stephen Naismith never panicked. Uh, it was like, if you look at points yesterday, could have chucked Tago on, potentially. You know, maybe sacrificed Vargas and put Tago on because Vargas had only played his first game in, in a bit. Uh, he could have changed shapes quicker than what he did, etc. But he didn't. Uh, his first two substitutions are to bring on basically a right back and a left back and we changed shape and we stuck to what we were doing and I think what the only other change you made was to bring Denham on didn't you? Took, Denham for Devlin now. Took, took Devlin off who was on our booking etc so we never panicked and that's the thing I like the most just now Kev about Hearts and we've spoken about in Touchwood because obviously we play on Saturday so the house of cards could come crumbling down but there's no panic they keep doing what they're doing and they have a confidence about them that they just, they believe in what they're doing for the first time in a long time. It doesn't feel like they're trying or second guessing what they've been told. It seems like they've got very clear instructions as to what's to happen and they keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it until it works. And I like that. Yeah, um, there's uh, there was an element about last night that was very repetitive and a lot of things and that comes back to what you've just said. This is the way we want to play. Break them down, um, and I think Tam said it earlier on, you, uh, or yourself. You, you you did see probably from about seventy minutes onwards them starting to be half a yard off it. Hearts getting a little bit more space. What that space then gave was the opportunity to actually get the ball out wide. I thought Forrest was outstanding yesterday again, um, constantly moving, constantly wanting the ball as well, which I think is a massive, massive thing. And you can only want the ball when you've got confidence and, and Forrest at this moment in time is going If there was anybody going to score something out of that in the game yesterday, it was going to be Forrest. Uh, and, and I thought, as I say, from our point of view, I think he was our man of the match yesterday. He got given yeah, it on the BBC. Actually. Did he? Yeah. I, I thought he was, I thought he was really, really good yesterday. And he has been for, for a number of weeks. Going back to what we've said before, you know, with Mackay giving a run, a run of games and everything else, Forrest must have been questioning himself. Forrest has now been given a run of games and it's now up to Barry Mackay to get better. That's my opinion anyway. Uh, and I agree. I agree. And I think what you just said there is something, if I was to level any criticism at our midfield three, you know, Benny Devlin and Grant there would be the opposite could be said of them is what we said with Forrest. The disappointing thing with them was Forrest wanted the ball constantly and that was probably the thing that annoyed me the most if I was to be annoyed at Grant, for example, was that he drifted in and out of the game where I'd expected him and would have wanted him to be a bit more demanding of give me the ball, try and make stuff happen because in the second half, especially when Devlin and Benny started turning and driving at Morton, it was no surprise to see that actually loads of our chances towards the end of the game were coming from us taking them on and, and driving at them from the midfield and getting numbers forward. Whereas in the first half, we were probably just a little bit too conservative uh, when we were, we were going in and trying to get numbers forward. And in that middle of the park as well, we were probably too safe too often. And I mean, like Benny especially, we know that he likes to recycle the ball and they always take the safe option. But I felt that in the first half, there was opportunities where they could have faced him up, turned and tried to do something a little bit different to just pass the ball back to Rowles or Kingsley, etc. <clears throat> but uh, <Yep. clears throat> 
<clears throat> this isn't me comparing what Hearts do to Man City, right? But I'm going to. <laughs> no one can run. But you watch the Manchester Derby, right? You watch Man City versus Man United. Man United scored a wonder goal after seven minutes. And Man City never panicked. They never changed the way they were playing. They never changed their philosophy. They just kept playing their football. More draining. Because good teams have done it to us. I've watched us chasing shadows at home versus Fiorentina. I've watched us chase shadows versus Istanbul. Hearts go side to side and across and back and forward and side and back. All they're doing is running, like Tam said. They're just running Morton. They're just running them into the ground. The pitch was heavy. The pitch was shite. They were having to, if they wanted to go press us and press aggressive, they had to run and they had to put the time in. And, and by the time you said, Kev, 65, 70 minutes into that game, Morton were dead. Any opportunities yep. that they had, they just went long or went for long throw-ins and set plays because they couldn't make up the ground anymore. They couldn't cover the distance. They couldn't get close to Grant. They couldn't get close to Devlin. They couldn't get close to Benny with a press. And Hearts were just, you know, in any other day, Hearts were the one three, four, five now yesterday. Uh, and with all due respect to Morton, if we'd started to take uh, any of our chances. Yep. So, <clears throat> from that as- aspect... I thought it was a very professional job last night by Hawks. Yeah, yeah. I know there was a couple of saves that, that Gordon makes. I think he makes one, which in my opinion was actually a foul before it. The boy the boy clearly takes out uh, Civic. But, you know, Gordon does what Gordon does. Um, I wouldn't even say it was a, a, a save that, you know, you would expect to create Gordon. It was just a save that you would expect to any goalkeeper. Um, yeah. But in all honesty... You know, you never really thought anything of it, and my only my only thing about um, the way I looked at the game yesterday was I wanted Vargas off the pitch after the one he missed. Um, mm. But you know, fast forward what four minutes or whatever it was between the two uh, chances and opportunities, and he, he slots that one away. Aye, Tam. Again, I'm I'm in Kev's camp. Maybe different. If you just watched on the telly. I don't think any of the saves Craig Gordon makes are anything other than routine saves to be honest with you I, I completely agree um, they they were going on about them a bit on the TV coverage I don't know if you watched highlights back or whatever but they, they're making out them but it's Craig Gordon you expect them I would expect Xander Clark to make the same saves it's, it, it wasn't any worry as you say to be honest right. and I think look there's a romance in the cup right that's what people people want it to seem like it was close between Hearts and Morton because Morton knocked at Motherwell and the Romance of the Cup, etc. It could have been a big scalp, a big crowd, etc. etc. But and we've spoke about this loads before. If you start getting into if Manny had Boz territory, you have to it has to be an open book for both sides. So if you this if we start talking off Gordon didn't make that save and Morton scored right cool well. If Benny hadn't missed for <clears> three <throat> yards out with Ahida, we go 1 0 up. If Fargas hadn't hit the bar for four yards out, we were 1 0 up. If Denham hadn't hit it straight at the goalkeeper, we were 1 0 up. If Shanklin won him with the goalkeeper, then he took a heavy touch and make an arse it, we would have been 1 0 up. If the keeper didn't save for Devlin shot, we would have been 1 0 up. If Forrest's cutback shot hang in the first half had went in, we'd have been. When you start to go down that route, you you talk that it genuinely could have been three, four, or five to Hearts if if we'd managed to take our chances at the time. And again, that's no disrespect to Morton because I thought Morton executed their game plan brilliantly. I thought they played well. They were tenacious, but they just lack quality. Do you know what I mean? They they're in the championship for a reason. They're managed by a guy with his pants filled with shit for a reason. Yeah, you because know, they're dog shit. Their pitch is dog shit. Their players are dog shit. That's why they're in that league. And I thought Hearts were just professional. I thought Hearts were... Uh, they weren't good by no stretch of the imagination, Hearts, but they did what they were meant to do. And we're in the semi-final for it. I don't know about you, but pre-game, I, I totally imagined the exact way that game panned out. Like, I thought it would be hard to beat, tough, be a bit nervy at points, but ultimately we'd get through. And that's that's how I felt before the game, but I don't know about you, but that's exactly how it went. And that's the thing that I like, go back to this team, Kev, is that what Tam just said there is what used to annoy us with Robbie Nielsen, is that we could all be sitting on the bus, going to the game, 
sitting in the pub talking about the game and we could say, this is what's going to happen. Livingston are going to play 10 men behind the ball. They're going to hit us long. Morton are going to be this. That, and, and we'd go watch Hearts and they seem completely shocked that that's what's happening. That doesn't happen with this Hearts team anymore. No, no, because back to what you said earlier on, they're, they're disciplined. Um, you know, there's a, 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 a you know an element of discipline about the team. They have got clear guidelines as to what is expected of them, and that's not just on a match day. I think that's now actually even to an extent the actual individual. There is a, an expectation on you as a Hearts player. This is what it means a to play for this club, but also you know as that team who could move on and, and create a bigger gap between your Aberdeens, your Hibs, your Motherwells, etc., etc. This is what you need to be doing and this is what we expect of you, which is only something that can come from someone who's been in that particular world of what Naismith has been. So, you know, these are the kind of positives you've got to take from it and these are the positives that we're now seeing for come to fruition anyway um, on a match day. Yeah, I think you see the, like you said, you see the reaction of the goal, especially like, Shankland, etc., etc., is that this team just want to win, and they know that what I like the most about them is the fact that they, other than Ibrox, realistically in the last three months, they they've made it difficult for teams that they're playing against. They've been like, you're going to have to earn the right to beat us. If you're going to beat us, you know there is no meek meek surrender like we've seen before etc and, and that grit and determination and discipline as you said Kev was there to see last night and I like the sensibleness of the, the manager as well last night Devlin gets booked for a ridiculous booking again but then you know he's Devlin, everything that's good about Devlin <laughs> is that you need him to be on that line and we took him off. Never ran the risk. Never. We yep. were, just take him off. Like be sensible. And you replace him with with Denham and say, go do the exact same. You know, go yep. go get go break forward, go at them. And I thought Denham played well when he came on. Yeah, he's probably his rushed decision the making. Uh, his decision making is getting a hell of a lot better. And again, yeah. that comes that comes down to who he's playing around and who he's playing alongside in training, learning. I mean, let's be honest, he's still a young lad. He's still learning his trade. Um, he's got some good guys around about him to learn that trade as well, which is which is really positive. Um, right. And I, okay, you should really say, he should have maybe been a wee bit more, <coughs> a wee bit more composure um, with his chance in front of goal yesterday. Um, and a wee bit more composure might have just nicely slipped it in the inside post or whatever, uh, rather than, than just hit the keeper with it. But, you know, we're through, so who cares? What I would say about that shot, the, the movement for that shot would... We don't often see something like that for our midfielder, so that was actually good to see driving at the yeah. box like he did. <clears throat> and I think one of the most pleasing things that I like right this very second about Hearts is the numbers in which Vargas scores from the shank, obviously, the, the goal that he scores. But you actually look, when Benny's breaking with the ball, Benny's got at least four options to pass that ball. You know, it's not just Benny driving forward, Denham's there. Cochrane's there, Forrest, like Shanklin, Vargas, everybody's there busting a gut to try and score. And I know it sounds it sounds daft, but you're Morton, you're 75 minutes, 80 minutes into a game where you've ran constant, you've closed down. Now you're in a situation where you're facing your end goal, running back, and you've got four or five players to in your head thinking where am I meant to go like who am I going where am I going I'm holding the line no holding the line is the keeper coming do I have to tackle do I dive in like those that's why we scored last night if Fargas hadn't scored we would have scored at a different chance because that's what we were doing we were just piling on pressure and again you've seen it when we played the, the ball into the corner and ran the clock then. there was so many opportunities there where we could have potentially got a shot away or made a pass. He, at one point Cochrane skinned about four players just to run to the co- in to the corner flag. Like he beat like two men in the box just to take it to the corner. Do you know what I mean? And that's like the confidence of it. That's the confidence team where they know that they trust what they're up to and they can execute it and stuff. So it, it wasn't a vintage Hearts performance last night. 
But Kev, how many times over the years <laughs> have we been in those situations as Hearts fans and we've slipped on the banana skin or we've missed the opportunity to get to a semi-final or a final. So you yep. take it, don't you? Exactly. I was, uh, I've been at that game against Airdrie, you know, and, and other games um, over the years, games that you probably expect to win. Um, you know, when we're going to Dunfermline after winning the Cup in 2006, um, shocking performance at, at East End Park. After winning the Cup in 98, going to Motherwell the following season, being absolutely shite. So, it, you know, we all have seen it. We've all been there. Tam, maybe not so much, um, you know, but you take these, you know, you take these wins, and if we are in a fortunate position come the end of May and we're lifting a trophy, we'll not think about last night's game. So, and that's that was one of the things I was thinking about today. I was thinking about this team, and do you get cut winning vibes off this team? Like, be be serious, be be honest. Um, I don't see any reason why not. I genuinely don't have any reason as to why that should not be the case. If you look at, you know, the the the, the one thing that you're maybe maybe missing is uh you know is a sort of centre half, um because there's like rumour that Kent might be out for the season and things like that. So that would be my only concern as to why this might not happen. I would say as time you get cut winning vibes. <clears throat> Well, a player like Shankland leading the line, like anything can happen for me. And I would love nothing more for him to win a cup at Hearts. And you've got Gordon coming back. That could be his swan song, winning a cup. There's something there that is like, I do like it. And I I, I do like the team. It's not often, I've well, put it this way, compare it to the Levine team we had in the Scottish Cup final. I could... You hate half of that team, and I'm no far behind you, to be honest. But in terms of the team we've got at the moment, there's no many I dislike, put it that way. So, there you go. This is my story podcast just ruined any chance of Hearts ever winning the yep. Scottish Cup. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you could clickbait that, uh, you can crop that, and you could throw it back in our face. I'll, I'll ask you it, though. Uh, I'll ask you <clears> it. Do you think they can? Or do you get vibes from it? Uh, no, I don't. I don't. That was why I asked when I was I was driving through it the day thinking about it, and I was like, I get it. I'm the same as you, Gordon. I don't know. I don't know. I love this side. I genuinely do. I'm starting to love this side. Uh, there's so much to like about it, but I'm I'm kind of like you, Kev. But I was more midfield. There's just something in the middle of the park that if we had someone, you know. Colin Cameron or Fulton esque or Brelli type thing. Just that, that, and we had Hartley and something about the middle of the park is where I feel that, you know, that's where we've historically won cups. We've always had a talisman type thing, if you know what I mean, but like just that area of the park. I'm hoping noon off kind of those players eventually, and like I like Benny, I like Devlin, I like both of them, I think they're good <coughs> players. But when you're looking at if we're stopping Rangers winning a trophy, if we're looking beating Celtic to a trophy, etc. It's an area of the park I think that we've just maybe just not quite good enough. Yeah, no, I get but, it. But I would, but I would absolutely, I would absolutely love to. It would be so hard to knock Rangers out and then not win the cup, wouldn't it? <laughs> Give me by Aberdeen probably. <laughs> or be the most hard thing ever. <laughs> no. Aye, so anything else catch your catch your view last night at the game or whatever? Nah, just as I said you. earlier, just a young lad that um, probably still ill. Um, that was <laughs> uh, that was that was hilarious last night. I hope the lad is actually feeling at least a bit better than he was last night. It was a good throwback being in the old terrace, Kev, wasn't it? It's was good. Aye, I was saying to the boys last night before I went in that was I hadn't been at that particular ground for something ridiculous like about 35, 40 years. So, um, aye, interesting. I think that was uh, it was my first away ground, given that my um, my mum's side of the family all come from down that way. So um, I'd uh, I'd been to Capelo before, but aye, it was good to go back to that. Um, it's good to reminisce, good to think about it from a time gone by, mate. Aye, it was it was fun. It was a bit of a throwback, although 
it is absolutely an advocate for proper safe standing. Uh, I hope the lady behind me that I think she's maybe broke her wrist or something. She fell in the or was pushed over in the aftermath of scoring. I hope she's okay. Uh, we helped her kind of get her out the out the ground as everybody was celebrating and sha la la and then jumping up and down. <laughs> she was getting carried out in a wee a wee wheelchair. So I hope she's all right. She took a bit yeah. of a dullion like, but uh, so. aye, it was good. It was a good wee a good wee day. Out. We'll take yeah. it. Move on to the semi. That's what it's all about. Correct. Right. Next up, actually, we'll talk about Vargas because I love Kenny Vargas. Same, but. He just needs to just no try and smash it every time. Just just take a wee minute. Frustrating. See player. what he was trying to do when he was when he tried to dink the keeper. If I'm being honest, Aye. Um, I can see what he was trying to do. I can see the value in it, etc. Just didn't execute it very well. Uh, but he does like that finish, doesn't he? He scored. He scored a couple of them now, where he's he's leathered it across the <laughs> across the keeper and in, but. You forget that he's so young. Uh, I think that he, he's enjoying playing in this team. Uh, and what I like about him for being a foreigner or whatever we've seen loads before is he's got balls like a proper tenacious. He gets stuck in and doesn't he get bullied. Like he's playing against total care horses, like Broadfoot and all that absolute muck at the back for Morton, and he just kept getting. Stuck in, he never, never waned for what he was trying to do. Like, absolutely. You know what I like about him as well. He, I'm, I'm saying about him missing chances and that, but he never gets like. He just seems to laugh them off, which could piss us off. But for me, it's like at least it shows he just gets on to the next one and goes for it that way. Alan Shearer always had a good quote hang about. It doesn't matter how many <clears throat> chances you miss. You know, you've got to be there to miss the chances. If you start to worry when you're no missing chances, because then you have to start asking questions to be like, well, what's what's going on? He's got to be in those positions to miss the chance. So you take that as a positive. But I, I, I I'm starting to really like Kenny Vargas. He's just, he's a great he's a great player, and if we can get that deal done, that would be absolutely superb. Right? I can't believe we don't even spoke about Broadfoot, man. Mind that time he burnt himself with an egg in the microwave. Uh, yeah, it sums him up, innit? it? You could sum up a person, it's that. Absolutely. You could sum up a person, it's that, innit? it? It's like I said, I've got a family member that's a Celtic fan, and the folk, if ever anybody ever asked me how to sum him up, I say, well, he fell off. The only person I know that's ever fell off a boat and never hit water. Like, <laughs> like if that doesn't sum up what he is, then it's the same with Burrowed Foot, innit? He burnt his face with an egg in the microwave. Like, Sums them up. So, right, what's up? Highlands on Saturday. Ross County versus Hearts. Anybody going up? To say against it. Too much on this weekend. Offense, Kev. I'm on the fence. I kind of make up my mind if I want to go or not. Right. Didn't realise that it was the international break, so that's my softener with a wife. <laughs> if, I, if I go up, is to be like... Oh, look, I've got two weeks off. You can book some activities right. next weekend, that's it. Yeah, there was plenty of activities. <laughs> that's it. No, I don't think I'll be, uh, I don't think I'll make it. Um, just too much on this or over the next couple of weekends. So Same. I'll, uh, I'll, d- I'll do an ando and stay well away. So what are we at? We've got Ross County away. Is it St Mirren away? Then Motherwell at him or something? No, no Motherwell at him. Kamarnock at him. Uh, somewhat like that, yeah. Um, so the, have... the next... Oh, go on, Kev, you go, you go first. Yeah, so you've got Ross County this weekend. Weekend, weekend off, then you've got home to Kilmarnock, away to St Mirren, at home to Livy. Right, OK. So we've got four games before the split. So you're looking realistically. If you can get something out of the weekend here, then it rolls into your Kilmarnock-St Mirren games, doesn't it? Yep. For kind of putting a nail in the coffin of those guys. I think St Mirren are what? St Mirren are the ones that are the closest behind us, aren't they? Correct. Aye, they actually play each other on Saturday as well. Right, okay. So, well, there you go. Perfect opportunity. Yeah. A perfect opportunity. We're Ross County, though, because I'm sure they've got Hibs tomorrow, don't they? Yep. How many points are they behind? Uh, Five five off Aberdeen. 
So, yeah, big game for them as well. And uh, Touchwood, we've had a pretty decent record in the Highlands. Also, I can't recently. do maths. It's four. Sorry. I didn't think it was four, but I was letting you away with it. <laughs> I was letting you away with it. Uh, any changes? Can we make many changes for the game that you for yesterday for Saturday? Don't expect to see any changes, if I'm honest. I mean, wouldn't expect to see anything, given that there's no positive sounds coming out of the club in regards to returns for Mackay, for Halkett, for Kent, for Noinoff. So for that point of view, I would expect it to be exactly the same team. The interesting yeah, one would maybe, be... Maybe. Are you going to say the same, I think? No, on you go. I was going to say maybe Cochrane coming back in, but... The only thing that Cochrane coming in for would be for Grant, potentially. Maybe if we change shape or whatever, but I think Grant's probably the only person that I would I could probably see being rotated in or out. Is it Fraser? Is he injured? Because he wasn't in the team yesterday, Fraser. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, that's a good but, point, actually. Uh, Was he signed maybe. before the? Aye, because he played against Thingy, didn't he? he? Played against Airdrie. I played against Airdrie. Aye. Mm-hmm. Aye, that would maybe be my only. The only change I could see really happening would potentially be Grant dropping in or out for someone else. Uh, but I, it's always a weird place to go, isn't it? I think as long as we can get out of Dodge without losing, I'll be pretty happy. Yep, I think that's that's all you've got to look for. Collect some points, even if you could say it, match what St Mirren do. Yeah. So what is it, St Mirren and Kilmarnock on Saturday? Is that what I said? Is it Kelly or it's St Mirren? Rugby Park. Aye, Kelly. Ideally, you want that to be a draw, doesn't it? Yep. Kill each other would be ideal. Right. Right. Well, we might as well give our predictions for the game. So, Tam, what is your prediction for Ross County versus Heart of Midlovian? I will go 1 0 Hearts. Magic. Kev. Uh, I'll go 2 1 Hearts. Nice. And I'll go 2 each. Surprise. Let's go. Yep. Let's go. Let's... Why not? Why not? It's not like you. <clears throat> True. Right, boys. And now she's what I talk about. No, I think that's it. Oh, good. Magic. Right. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in listening hopefully we'll be back next Sunday with hopefully another three points in the bag and another step closer towards European group stage football yes. alright boys exactly cheers guys see you all soon Gorgoros